<laughs> I only have an iron in my studio. Yeah, I've had to press these out, so I thought, well, let's see who's around. Whoops. Instead of um, sitting here <laughs> ironing by myself. Uh, they'll be done fast. Just that um, this particular paper got really warpy. I don't make it really flat, just enough so that my customers don't freak out. And it completes the drying phase too. Yeah, I don't think, well, yeah, this has touched fabric, but only craft fabric. <laughs> Ooh, look how pretty these came out. Now, this particular batch that I did today, I received some, um, some leaves that came from Georgia via Florida. <laughs> uh. It says, uh, CJ says that the leather that I'm looking for is very expensive. I need a raw hider. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, see, the lady that teaches the class how to do that, she gets her hides, I think, like from Pakistan or something. She really had a search to try and find, you know, hides that didn't have this and didn't have that. That was pretty cool. Anyway, um, yeah, rawhide. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Yours went out. I don't remember what day. I think it, if today's must have been like, I don't know, Monday, Tuesday. You may have them already. Let me put this over here. I'll have to contact that lady and see if if she sells the hides. I would think if she offers the class. I mean, she's got to have the hides during the class. But sometimes these ladies, you know, they don't sell just the material. They want you to, you know, get everything, class everything. Okay, great, Lisa. It should be there. This was just the one that I put there to cover. Cause I put a brick on top of everything, so I just put something to see what, you know, what it does. Sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not. It's printing on leather class, eco printing on leather. She just does it um, in her studios. Forget what state she's in, but it's about, oh, I can't remember, like $500 or so. I mean, there's no way I would take her class. Yeah, she's one of those cheap classes. <laughs> These came out pretty cool. 
Now, all I did with these, I just put, um, I think it was a little bit of black tea in the water, and that was it. Anyway, as I was saying, these leaves came from Georgia. Uh-oh. Oh, I was looking on YouTube and it was like, ee. Anyway, um, let me see. Let me read. I'm trying to remember to read. Do I use steam on these? No. They're still damp. So just the heat of the uh, of the iron is enough. They're they're a little damp because I just took them out maybe maybe about an hour and a half ago or so. So Johnny, her husband, went to Georgia, and I guess in Georgia there's a lot of white oak. And so some of these are white oak. And some of them are my sweet gum tree. Now, see, this is the white oak. I think this is the white oak. But this is my sweet gum um, tree. So what are you guys up to? We've had a mild weather the past couple of days, but it's supposed to get cooler tomorrow. Chance of drizzly yuck over the weekend. Not looking forward to yuck weather. I don't know what that is, but that's the oak. And I think that's the oak, too, right there. Fifty dangles, oh my goodness. Waiting for snow. <laughs> See, people are waiting. Some people don't want it. Some people want it. If we had real snow, I would like it. And when I say real snow, I mean, you know, the, the dry snow you get up in the higher elevation. But whenever it snows, it's very rare it snows here. And very rare it stays on the ground. But when it does, it's that wet, yucky stuff. You know, it's like one stage away from sleep. <laughs> Just yucky stuff. And then it's not, the ground isn't cold enough. And it just melts really fast. And then you just, you know, have mushy, mushiness everywhere. Don't like it. I've been here 13 years, and I think maybe twice it snowed, and it looked like real snow for maybe a day. I remember because the dogs had so much fun playing in the snow, running around and tagging each other and sticking their nose in it and having a really fun time. Ooh, look at these. Now, that's a sweet gum here. This right there. Some of these, I don't know what they are. Because there was <clears throat> a bigger variety than just the um, the white oak in the box that she sent. There was, you know, different types. And I don't know my leaves, especially when they aren't on a tree. 
<laughs> yeah, Colorado. See, I used to live up in the mountains in um, California, Central California, up in the mountains. We were at about, how oh, I can't remember the elevation. It was like 10,000 feet or something like that. And the snow we got there was the dry snow. It was beautiful. Just gorgeous. And then, um, and then when I lived in Hawaii, we'd go up to the top of Mauna Kea. And um, Mauna Kea is like 12,000 feet. And their snow was beautiful. It was, it was that, that dry, dry, fluffy snow. And whenever you go up there, it was really cool because um, the storms would come in and out really fast. And of course, then you had those blue skies and you're up so high. The sun was really warm. And then you had the, the snow. It was just, and the sky was so blue. I don't know, it was just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And you could see forever. Yeah, Lisa. Lisa goes, we don't want any more snow. Oh, Johnny's here. These these are from your stuff, Johnny. I can't identify them all. And I've barely taken a few. I mean, I took a lot, but, well, all of these. I got another batch on the uh, on my table and on my hanger thingamajigger drawing some of my stuff. And I still have three quarters of the box, so I'm going to get a lot of prints out of this. This dark stuff you see is kind of the residue from um, the tea I put in there. I, I drew, I threw some, um, I cut a small bag of um, dark tea and just threw it in there. Hey, Darla. Hi, Elizabeth. Okay, Johnny. Thank you. It was so funny. I opened up the box. Now, my husband doesn't know, you know, one plant or tree from another. He's the first one to admit it. He doesn't, he does, he's not really into it, right? He barely knows the stuff that's in our yard. I open up the box. <laughs> I took a leaf out. He goes, oh, that looks like from the white oak tree. And I looked at him and I go, say what? Yeah, that looks like from the white oak. I go, how do you know a leaf from a white oak? oak when you don't know even what's in your own yard then he starts telling me about this tree when he was young and oh my goodness it went into you know one of those tom sawyer stories but he knew his white oak when he saw it <laughs> that was so funny 
I just looked at him like, who are you? Oh my goodness, what are all these people doing? Ah. Johnny's up. She's never up this late. Laura's up. She's never up this late. What's with you people? Now, see, this isn't the oak, but it was something in the box, whatever that is. See, this is the oak right here. And then what was really cool is I got another box today <laughs> from Renee from Texas. So I got all of those. Boy, I've got plenty of stuff to be printing out. Let me tell you. Hey, Jennifer. I like leaving these because a lot of people, they'll tear them off and put it on a collage or something. Sometimes they rip off all the way, but I throw them in anyway. So these latest batches are going to have stuff from Georgia and Texas. Ooh, look at those pretty colors in there. I love when I get the green. Oh, see, I figured it came from the sweet gum. It's funny how those leaves from my sweet gum tree, um, they don't all print the same. It's pretty cool. Anyway, here's some more of the oak. Isn't that pretty? Right here. And they also put differently on the different papers, like I explained before. This is a different, from a different pad. You can see how it's printing differently. And what was so funny is that all the papers I'm using um, they're from two, uh, three different pads, but they're all mixed media and they're all the same weight, but they all printed differently. You know, the, the three pads. It's very strange. So I just never know. And I'm not loyal to any particular um, brand of paper. My loyalty is to my checkbook. So <laughs> whatever's on sale, whatever coupon I have. But I do stick to mostly mixed media paper and 24 pound copy paper. I've tried all different kinds of papers and those have ended up being my favorites after trying all kinds. This is a sweet gum again. Look how it got green. I'm happy. 
and then it has a nice contrast to that dark brown. Looks pretty. Yeah, when you can't when you can't sleep, just come over and hang out with me and I'll put you to sleep real fast. <laughs> how exciting is watching somebody iron. Whoo, look how pretty. When I look on the YouTube, it's all fuzzy. Is it fuzzy for you guys too? Or is it just my computer? I did a bunch earlier too. It's clear. Okay, good. For some reason on my computer, it looks really does not look good. Doesn't look clear, in other words. Now, this is watercolor paper. I had some pieces, so I decided to use them up. Still a little wet. Now, watercolor is very, very sensitive and touchy when it's wet. Oh, when it comes to ironing, I like to put a piece of uh, copy paper on top of it. If I don't put a piece of copy paper, if this is really, really wet, it starts to roll off. The, um, the paper just rolls. I don't know why. Just the way watercolor paper is made, I guess. pretty damn but I was working on some new specimen labels um, from that digi that I have. And this time, instead of putting in plants, I have a bunch of uh, copy free bugs. So I printed a bunch of the bugs. And started putting them in there. I'll show them to you when I'm done here. Irony. I think they're going to come out looking kind of cute.
almost look like a palm tree. It looks like it's watercolor, doesn't it? Watercolor paper. I guess it should look watercolored. I'm having trouble with my scanner. It's an all-in-one, so, you know, it isn't specifically for scanning, but I was trying to scan. And for some reason, maybe somebody has had this experiment experience before, it'll scan, and when it saves it, instead of saving the whole picture, it will scan, let's say, to right here and saves that. And then scans to right here and saves that. <laughs> it like It's like it's trying to edit everything. And then maybe like this one will scan to here and save that. And then scan to here and save that. I can't get the whole picture of anything. I've tried all kinds of stuff. So I guess I'm going to have to contact the manufacturer, which I don't know how their support system is. We'll find out. But it's the goofiest thing. On one picture I put in there, I mean, one thing I went to go scan, it saved it to five different files. It's just all chopped up. It's the craziest thing. All right, so those are still a little warped, but that's a lot better than what they, what they were in the little dryer, so that's good. Ta-da! All right. So it went unplugged. Oh, let me see the other one's dry. I had another batch, and it came out really cool. Now, they're still way too wet to um, to try and iron. I'll just end up tearing them. So, let me unplug this. Get this out of here. So I don't have to look at an iron. And I'll show you real quick before I go these, these guys I was working on. I think they came out kind of cute. Remember the other ones that I made to um, fix up for the calendar, and I use them in the in the cover of those um, um, traveler's notebooks that I made. So now I'm doing it with bugs. I just started. I haven't really decorated them yet. I've just put the uh, little bug picture in there. <laughs> Hey, Patricia. Oh, so that's happened to you before, Darla? Okay. Yeah, mine doesn't really give me an option. And it just started doing that. I've, I've scanned before. And um, I don't know. It just started to be goofy. Look at my bugs. Hey, Kathy. 
Oh, this was just a quickie. I was ironing my my um, eco dyed papers, so I figured, hey, see if anybody wants to keep me company while I was ironing. It's the only time I iron. <laughs> Now I have some stamps that have to do with bugs and different things. So I'm going to add a bunch of stuff to that and then find some, some kind of, you know, some kind of stickers or labels, I should say, that make reference because these are all in reference to plants. So I want to see if I can find some stuff in reference to bugs and then I can print those out and glue them on there. If not, it doesn't matter. It's all in Latin anyway, so. <laughs> Unless you're really, really into bugs and plants, you won't know the difference. But I think I might kind of cool. I have some others. I do have some more. So I might print out... Um, this is what I'm printing out and then doing that with these. So I have, I have plenty more bugs to choose from. Yay! More kinds of bugs. Oh, that one's cool. And see, some of them, the way they just fell for me to cut, um, some of them were large enough that I could put in the back, cut this open, and put them in the back. And then others, they were just, you know, too small to do that. So I just um, glued them on the front. A little different. I don't know if you can tell all that much difference, you know, through a video, but live you can really, really see the difference, the dimension that um, cutting it open gives it as opposed to just um, gluing it on top. But I like them both. So I think this one's kind of cool, but he's going to have to be on top somehow because he's too small. Let me see. And then I just, oh, that's really crooked. <laughs> Why didn't you guys tell me how crooked that was? All right. So then I just go around the edge and distress it. And that'll help give it a little bit of dimension, even though. It's just sitting on top. And, and then I just glue it with a glue stick. And try to halfway 
center it all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there you go. I guess they're all done that I have printed already. And I have a couple of different bug stamps. I think I have two sets, I think. Check my book Where, where did I put my book yesterday. <laughs> I should have taken them out. in the bottom. Why? I can't say that. Okay, so here's a few bugs. When I don't need them, I'll find them. You know how that goes. So, now see this little guy that has little figures. I can cut those out and. Other one has more more things that are written out. Let's see. Let's see what these look like.
I like to um, print them out on something else, stamp them out on something else, then cut them out, and then put them on top. And that gives another dimension. So then, so see if I wanted to cover that up or this up here because that says botanical. So I might want to cover that up. I guess it would have helped if I stamped it on straight. And why would I do that? <laughs> that would make things way too easy. Okay, so now that would cover up. That could cover that up right there. See, that would look cute. And that just says research department, so that wouldn't matter. And then if I wanted to cover that up, I could put that right there. Hey, Kathleen. We finished. We finished the, the ironing already. We're done. I had a I had a whole um, bundle of my ego dye that I had hanging on my little drying rack. Had to move them out of there to put another bundle. And it wasn't completely dry, so I thought I'd iron them out a little bit. I don't think I like that there. And we moved on to bugs. Wish I knew where my other stamp was. I know I have another stamp. It's bugging me. Anyway. Yeah, I'll put that right there. Cover that up. Yeah, I know some people don't like their bugs like I do.
is it Nix? What are we talking about? I I I lost what's I missed something. <laughs> is what Nix? <laughs> The bugs? No. Uh-uh. Um, these are my own bugs that I... Every time I find a bug that is um, that I think is interesting and is copy free, copyright free, I stick it in a folder. I have a bunch of bugs, so I just decided to print some out and fill them in instead of using the uh, the botanicals that this kit came with. Whoops. Glue that one down. I like how that one looks. Yeah, these are no longer crawling or biting. Yeah, I get confused with her shop because even on her, which, you know, I'm not going to tell her what to do, of course, but it's very, um, it's, what's the word I'm trying to think? Confusing, I guess. Because even on her, I'll show it to you, even on her, because um, I keep calling her, her shop. I know it's not the name of her shop, but I keep saying it's Tracy Fox because... Even on her digital, she's got the Fox on there, Fox Creations. So I don't know where the love junk journal, I never think of that when I think of her. I think of the Fox. And then she has a Fox right on here. So then I really get, you know, all messed up and think, anyway, you know what I'm saying. So I think in the past I've given the people the wrong name. I mean, I gave her name, but I gave the wrong name to her to her um to her shop I don't know it just doesn't make any sense to me there's too many things on there and a feeble mind like mine just gets confused <laughs> all her stuff should be one name for us uh slow people Where was I going to put this? I put the glue. Where was it going? I don't know. So what's the name of her shop now? <laughs> I don't even know the name of her. I'm so confused. I do not know what the name of her shop is. Okay, that looks cute. I like that.
And then I think her Facebook group is a different name, right? Fox Creative is the name of the shop. I don't know. I could not find her if I tried. I'm just glad I got this. She does really pretty stuff. It's just that I think her branding is confusing, at least to me. I'm not going to speak for anybody else. It's, uh, <coughs> I just, I get confused. Like I said, it's probably just me. <coughs> I got stuck in my head the little picture of that fox, and that's all. That's the only thing I think of. I think of her name, and I think that of the fox, and I don't think about junk journal, nothing. You know, I just, I'm looking for the fox. Because even when I look, see, even when I look at this, it doesn't really tell me the name of her shop. She's got two things here. Love Junk Journals and Fox Creative. Neither one rolls off my tongue very well. <laughs> but, you know, advertising is everything. And, and, you know, helping people remember, you know, and that little fox would do it for me. She needs to drop all the junk journal, junk, you know, everything else that doesn't have to do with the fox. But she didn't ask me, so. Because that little fox is perfect um, marketing. Well, at least for me that I need a visual. So that that really helps me a lot. Why is she stuck with it, Darla? You can change the name of your shop, I think, up to two or three times. Unless she's already changed it once. Whoops, forgot to put...
Okay. I really need to find my other stamp. <laughs> it has more goodies. Where would it be? Where would my other book stamp be? Maybe in my gardening stamp. That would be a logical place. So it's probably not there. Not there either. Where are my other bugs? Better put a lid on this. Put a lid on it, Rosemary. I must have put them away in the wrong spot. I'll have to look for them tomorrow. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. I'm done with that because <laughs> I have to find my stamps. I have to find my stamps. That will have to be for another day. Put all this together. Don't want to lose yet another or something. There's all those from the other stamping I did. There we go. That'll be ready for playtime tomorrow sometime. Keep those bug stamps there. I can use those still. And I guess that's it. So 
So talk to me. <laughs> Darla, you do know it all. Yeah, exactly, Elizabeth. I got to sneak up from another corner. <laughs> it's weird because it seemed like maybe, well, time goes by very quickly. But it was sometime last week when I was looking for something else in my little stamp area. And I came across my, uh, all my bug ones. So I must have um, put them together somewhere else. And one of my other... Um, I guess in another folder that I have my other stamps in. I don't know. It's going to drive me crazy till I find them. Hey, Beth. Woo. How's the weather where you are? I better have a swig of my tea. No, it is not caffeinated tea. It's warm tea. How come you, well, where's Super Bath? Hey. Where's Super Bath? What happened? Put Super Bath back. What happened? How come your messages got hidden? Oh. Okay. No, I know you're there, but your messages were taken away. Okay. She's back. Very good. I saw that new picture you put. Are you having classes tomorrow or something? The calm before the storm. Jennifer was exercising her finger. <laughs> oh, today was the class. Oh, I missed the, the picture that I saw. must have been right before the class then. Maybe I saw it yesterday. I don't know. <laughs> How did it go? Was it adults or children or a combo? She has really cool classes in her studio, Beth does. They make paper. Oh. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's okay, Jennifer. I've done the same thing. Oh, how cool is that? I would have liked to have been in that class, Beth. Oh, cool. I've been figuring out, I want to do something new. Um, this coming year when it comes to art and I don't know what it is. I just want to try something different. I feel like I'm in a rut of what I do. And that's not why I do art to be in a rut. Yeah, 
That's true. That's why I say sometimes I just go shopping inside of my studio and then I find stuff. I go, oh, yeah, why don't I make this? <laughs> I have some friends that were maybe like for 12 years, they were in Papua New Guinea and they have some really cool stuff, wood stuff, carvings. I've never done a storyboard before. I don't think I know where to begin with a storyboard. Yeah, aren't those carvings gorgeous? Yeah. I'm always trying to think of something different to do. And I think I'm getting frustrated because I'm running out of something different to do. <laughs> but I was reading an interesting article the other day. It had to do with, um, it wasn't so much about necessarily, you know, Beth, I can't find a class that interests me. I really don't. Well, maybe it interests me, but the prices don't. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to pay three, four, five hundred dollars for a for a course. You know, ooh, I bet you got some cool stuff in Peru. Who is Flora? Educate me, Beth. Fresh paint. What I mean, what kind of a class is it? Is it like mixed media? Is it portrait? Oh, intuitive painting. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. For some reason, intuitive painting to me, I translate it in my head and it means do your own thing. <laughs> Just do your own thing. And I look at, at you know, different, um, different forms of art and, you know, see what gets me excited. No. See, I think that's my problem, Beth. I don't know anybody. I don't know any artists. I'm just very, um, I'm sheltered. Ooh, books. See, I love books. I'm just sick and tired of all these junk journals. I mean, just to be blunt. <laughs> That's why I'm always making the covers a little different. I want I want to do something different. That sounds like a good idea, Elizabeth. Because when you have too much stuff around, it's hard for you to focus. She does a passport journal.
I have old passports. I have my husband's and my own. And, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've taken, okay, my whole, my whole, I, you know, I haven't been doing this for very, I've been doing this for maybe about four years, maybe three and a half, three and a half, yeah, three and a half, four years I've been doing, you know, I discovered mixed media and books and, you know, everything that we do, that's as long as I've known of it. And I'm not going to say who I took the class from. But I took a class that, you know, from somebody who, you know, is well thought of and does n nice things. And I was thoroughly disappointed. Um, the person was, in my opinion, she wasn't a good teacher. Um, and she didn't teach me anything or she didn't show anything that you can't find on a YouTube, you know, video. I'm looking for something that I can't figure out on my own. If I, you know, I don't want somebody to teach me something that I can figure out on my, on my own. Basically <laughs> I want somebody to teach me something. I have no idea how to do and that I want to learn how to do it. That's what I'm looking for. And, um, you know, um, I guess I'm just looking to be inspired by something new and innovative. And everything is just, you know, kind of rehashing something else. I don't like dirty pores. I don't like that. <laughs> I know you would, Beth. Ooh, I would love to watercolor. Okay, are you, uh, how many of you are familiar with, um, hold on one second, let me get this over here, things falling over. H how many are, are uh, familiar with um, Vicki Ross? Do you, are, she's an artist on YouTube. Are you guys familiar with Vicki Ross? Okay, so, okay, so you know Vicky Roth. Okay, she's a friend of mine. She comes to my studio. She takes classes from me. All right, but, but because she wants to loosen up, she is a, um, she is a classically trained artist in the, you know, she, she learned from the pros, you know, she went to Europe. She learned how to do watercolor over there. She knows how to do acrylics. She knows the people that make the real high-end pan pastels. I mean, she knows all the high-end stuff. And so she discovered mixed media and started coming over to my place because she wanted to loosen up. She wanted to feel more free. She never done mixed media. She hadn't done junk journaling. She hadn't done collaging. She hadn't done any of that stuff. So all that stuff was new and exciting to her. And she comes over here and that's what we do. Now, <laughs> now I've told her, you know, I think I would like to learn how to watercolor. Now the problem is because she's classically trained, she wants to teach me, I guess, the way you're supposed to be taught, right? And I guess I'm a bad student. I don't want, I don't want to 
learn the um, the philosophy and the you know the theory and you know I don't want to learn all that. I'm a bad student. I just want you to show me what to do on the paper. <laughs> I've told her just show me how to do it on the paper, and I'll be happy. <laughs> Yeah, and and she's good. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, I just look at her stuff and I just like my jaw just drops cuz she's such a beautiful artist. And all of everything she does, you know, you can see the soul inside of when she does the portraits. That's mostly what I've seen of hers. And you can see it, you know. You can see behind the eyes. It's just beautiful. Yeah, I just want down and dirty. I don't want <laughs> I don't want to know who developed that watercolor and what goes into the mix of that watercolor and how to make my own. I don't care about that stuff. I just I just I honestly don't care. I don't want to be educated. <laughs> I just want to have fun. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, it depends what you call good paper. I have watercolor paper because I use a lot of watercolor paper with my eco dyeing. And, um, and I have, yeah, I got some good brushes. I have some watercolor brushes. And I have some good watercolor stuff. I have the stuff. No. See, I don't know anybody. I'm telling you, Beth, I don't know anybody. And see, Lisa, that's what um, Vicky is, too. She's a realistic painter. And I, 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 okay, let me show you what I like. Okay, my fantasy world, hold on. I will show you. Where's my little book I have here? It's somewhere. This is in my fantasy land. Magic wand land. And even this is a little too um, a little too tight for me. Let me find one in here. See, I love that. These are all watercolor. This is, to me is just beautiful. Not a lot of detail. See, that's got too much detail for me. Let me find, let me find some. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. I think that's beautiful. That too. That's so pretty. And that. And like I say, I know this is just all in my fantasy. even something like that I like that too oh that's pretty That's a dural, but too hard. <laughs> okay, see this? Okay, just to give you an example. Um, one day, Vicki was over here, and I was showing her this book. I said, this is what I would like to do. I like this. So she gets one of my papers. I had watercolors. She grabs my watercolors, 
And in about, I'm not exaggerating, two minutes, she paints that. <laughs> and I told her, get out of here. <laughs> but see, if I could do that, I'd be happy. <laughs> Oh, she even signed it, little smart Alec. <laughs> I like that too. Now I've done little faces, you know, like mixed media, what I call mixed media faces. And I put collage on them and things like that. And I think it's fun, but I know it isn't, it, it doesn't look the way I want it to look. It isn't the kind of art I want to do. Yeah. That's what she tells me. I got to learn how to mix my own colors in the washes and, you know, all that stuff. I guess I'm just going to have to, like, sit her down and say, okay, you're going to teach me how to do this. But I don't want to learn that, that, and the other. <laughs> Already I'm a difficult student. Let me see. Um, trying to find... Like this little girl that I did. Well, that's not watercolor, though. And it's too high up. I don't think I can get it. It's way up. Let me see. If you hear a big fall, it was me. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay. There you go. Here's a sad little face I did. This was when I very first discovered mixed media. And then I gave up. I said, nah, it's not for me. This is a little sad little face that I made. <laughs> this is my first attempt at a face. <laughs> and then I gave up. <laughs> and she looks so sad and pathetic. Oh my goodness, oils. Oh wow. Yeah. Vicky comes over here with her oils too. Oh wow, Lisa. That's the first thing I did. I did this and then, excuse me, I'm snacking on something. I did this. I went sort of on a tangent like for like about a month and I did a few things. And then, I don't know, I guess because it didn't look the way I wanted it to look. <laughs> Whoops, hold on, let me see if I can get this. I have them way up on a shelf, so I'm on my tippy toes here. I hope they don't fall on my head. Again, she looks so sad. And so what I did with her is I did her on some mixed media paper and then um, I cut her out and glued her on this background and then um, tore up some, some of these pages that I had and um, cut them out and glued it. So it's basically, it's all collaged on basically.
I'm snacking. Excuse me. <laughs> so I ended up with sad girls. And I thought, uh oh. Maybe it's a reflection that I'm sad in what I'm doing. <laughs> I like when you collage things on top of other things because like this one, this right here is a, a napkin that I collaged on her. And then up here, these are napkins. And then this stuff down here was some stuff I'd gotten in Happy Mail. So I glued that down there. That's what Vicky was saying, that it was harder to, to loosen up. Maybe it's what you start off learning first is easier, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, she's, she's trained. And it was really hard for her to let go. Yeah, sometimes she starts to get fixated, too, on something, and then she stops herself. But then I like doing, see, I did these, and then I got a photograph that I had. And then I started. See, I, I think what it is is that I get bored very quickly, and I get easily distracted. And then I run off and do something else. And I never really get good at any particular thing. Because then after that, I decided, huh, I think I'm going to get one of my photographs. And I'm going to do an image transfer. <laughs> and I did this. <laughs> and so I got this big canvas. And did different kind of collaging in the background. And then I printed the photograph that I had. And I did an image transfer on that. And then I came back with um, different, I don't know. I just did all kinds of stuff on here. You name it, it's on here. And I enjoyed doing that. So I don't I guess it's what I don't know what I like or maybe I like everything and I don't know. I have no idea. But see, that was fun. I enjoyed doing that. I have another one somewhere. I can't remember where it is. A smaller one. I think it's in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. This is a picture I took down in Ecuador of some just some girls standing around and, you know. I put them on a canvas. I like how that came out. And then I came back with some paint and highlighted some colors here and there. I brought in the turquoise and a little bit of the green. 
Maybe I should get back to that. I really like doing these. It's been a long time since I did these. Like, what, three years or so? This live... Um, let me think. Um, probably not in one session because it's got to dry, completely dry, before I take off the, uh, before I rub off the paper to expose the transfer. So I'd have to have one. I, yeah, I guess I could, but it'd have to be like, you know, two different paintings, two different canvases. Um, have one already prepared and, and dry. And waiting, you know, waiting to the side. And then get to the point where, um, where I'd have to wait, you know, and let it dry and put it to the side and then bring the other one that I had already done that's already dry. And then I guess I could. Yeah, there's a lot of drying time because all this background has to dry. It had to be a long one. <laughs> it would be a long, well, like we're not here very long, right? <laughs> Hello, Sue. We're just jibber jabbering about being being inspired and what we really want to do and and I'm just complaining. <laughs> just complaining that I don't know what to do with my art, what I want to do. I'm getting bored. That's all it is. I'm getting bored doing the same old what I think is the same old stuff. And most of you that, you know, follow what I do you know, I think you already know that I try to do something different all the time. I try not to repeat myself. And I think it's because, you know, I'm just, I get, I don't know, I get bored. I just want to do something different. I don't want to do the same old thing. And I don't want to repeat this. You know, even though I might do something that I really like, I don't want to repeat it over and over again. I want to do something different. Maybe I'm just bored with myself. <laughs> You're right. I wouldn't get bored showing you guys. <laughs> yeah, but that would just be, you know, one night, right? And then, okay, next. <laughs> I guess in one way it's good to get bored because you try new things and you challenge yourself. But on the other hand, you know, it's kind of frustrating too. So, you know, you don't want to really frustrate yourself. But I was going to, what I was going to say before was I was reading this article it didn't necessarily have to do about art, but it had to do with things that we do and um, and about our motivation of why we do it. You know, so they were they had interviewed different people like writers and doctors and teachers. And um, the real question was, you know, not do you find it fulfilling or. How did you get started or whatever? It, but the, the question that was asked all these people was, um, why do you do what you do? And a lot of people didn't have an answer. They didn't even know why they did what they did. You know, um, sometimes it's just like, you know, all the family expected you to take over the family business or, you know, your parents wanted you to be a doctor or whatever it was, you know. But a lot of the things, it wasn't because it was what they wanted to do. And even if it was something they wanted to do, they didn't even know why they wanted to do it. 
And so that was like basically the real question. Why do you do what you do? So if you translate that into our art or our creativity, whatever it is that you do, I guess you have to ask yourself, why, why art? Why do you choose art? Why do you do that? And I guess until you have like a real answer, you're going to kind of be floundering. Like, why do you do that? And I think that's kind of sort of where I am. Why do I, you know, why do I do it? Um, you know, some people do it um, to get attention. Some people do it to be creative. Some people do it to try to make money. Some people do it, you know, just um, to have something to do. Some people like or create, you know, do creative things because they like to, you know, have it in their home. They like to see it. They like to give it away. I mean, there's all different kinds of reasons why people are creative. And I think a lot of us don't even know why. And maybe that's where some of the frustration comes in. You know, why? I mean, some people don't care, maybe. You know, I don't care why I do it. I just do it. But I think it's a notion to figure out, well, why do you do it? What motivates you? And if you figure that out, then maybe it can help direct you um, to do things that are a little more fulfilling if you understand why you're doing it. And then you can direct yourself into places that will, you know, gratify that feeling of, you know, what's behind your motivation in the first place. That's all I'm trying to say. I think. <laughs> I think. I remember when I was a kid um, and, and for some reason it just popped into my head. I don't know why, but I remember when I was real, really young, I mean, really, really young, like maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven, around that age, you know, when you just started school and stuff like that. When I would come home from school, my favorite game to play with my mom was get a pad of paper and I would have my mom um, just any old way draw a swiggle. And I was supposed to find a picture in there. I was supposed to, you know, the whole point was to, you know, I'm sure a lot of kids have done that. But I like I couldn't wait to get home to do that and find a picture and draw a picture in that swiggle. That was like my favorite, favorite thing to do. I was a real, you know, I was real easy to please child. <laughs> and that. And I would just every day I would beg my mother, oh, please, 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 please. I could do it for hours if she would have put up with that, you know. And that was about my only, you know, because people say, oh, you know, when did you, you know, learn that, you know, you loved art or you wanted to do art? Well, I didn't even know that was art, to tell you the truth. But I loved doing that. And then my whole life, I was never involved in art. I never drew. I never I never did anything. Um, my background was construction. So I got that my outlet came through that, you know, through um, drawing plans, you know, designing a, a floor plan, um, picking out um, tiles and carpet. And, you know, that was my artistic outlet, you know. And even then, you know, I love to play with the plaster and grout and, you know, all those things that, you know, you can incorporate into your mixed media. And um, it wasn't until, like I say, just a few years ago that I even discovered what mixed media was. I would have gone crazy if I had to learn about all this stuff years and years and years ago, you know. But, you know, timing, I guess, is everything. But my point is. <laughs> Is that I think even to this day, the fact like collaging and gluing and all that to me is just a variation of taking a shape and creating something else out of that shape. You know, whether it's a magazine, whether it's a picture, you know, whatever it is that you're using, you're just altering something and creating, you know, your impression of what you see there. And so it's kind of sort of the same thing of what I was doing like I was five years old so it's kind of strange how everything just kind of sometimes goes full circle
So having said that, <clears throat> I still don't know what I'm going to start with next year. But I do want to do something. I want to do something different. Maybe I'll do more with my soldering and um, with my junk jewelry or something. I don't know. I don't know. I have a lot of choices. I have a lot of junk. Yeah, see, Darla, you and me are in the same boat. We're a bunch of newbies. And you know, I, I, I see a pattern in myself too where I, um, I start something, a new project of whatever it is, and I feel like I get to a point where I think I've done all I can do as far as my abilities in a certain area, and then I lose complete interest and I move on to something else. And, um, I saw that with, even with like sewing, I had never sewn all my life. I just, I know, you know, I just didn't care about it at all. Then one day I decided, Hey, I think I want to make something. And what do I do? <laughs> I was, let me see how old was I? It was probably like maybe, oh, I'm trying to think how old I was, maybe 20, 20, 21. I decided to, to um, go buy a pattern, and um, I was I was well. If I went to town with my brother, and um, and I told him what I was going to do, I said I think I'm going to sew something. He says, "Oh, could you make me? Could you make me a jacket?" And so we go looking at patterns, and he finds a man's suit, the full suit, right? And he says, you think you can make me one of those? And a stupid me, I go, oh, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll see why not. We bought the material, everything. I made him a suit. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing, the pants, the jacket. And um, you wouldn't believe the compliments that he got on that suit. And I thought, oh, my goodness, you know. Well, I ended up, um, when I got married, I made my husband's wedding suit and my wedding dress and the girls' dresses when I got married. And I don't even sew anymore. I don't sew at all because I figure once you've made your wedding dress, your wedding suit, <laughs> your whole thing, I'm done. <laughs> There's, there's nothing else to do. You've done it already. <laughs> Next. And I kind of sort of approach those kinds of things the same. Everything I notice the same way. I go big. I go for, you know, the whole thing, the whole, the whole enchilada. And then once I've done it, I lose complete interest and I move on to something else. I mean, I don't, I don't sew anything except paper now. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> See, my mom wanted to show me how to sew when I was a kid. She got me a Barbie doll and all the little stuff. I hated Barbie. I hated dolls. I did not like dolls at all. My mom ended up making all the Barbie doll dresses for herself. <laughs> so, um, whoops. It's not like this anymore. So, um, so yeah, so it was, uh, it's always been a little, I, I, I noticed, I know that about myself, you know, that I, uh, um, that I kind of like, I guess kind of like go to extremes, you know, I'll go all the way and then I don't do it anymore at all. So. And I think that I'm at those crossroads right now. Stained glass. You know, I thought about stained glass. 
I've done my version of fake stained glass. <laughs> you know I've done that. <laughs> Stained glass can get kind of pricey, can't it, though? The, the glass itself. Well, I guess no more than the stuff we buy now. See, I've done mosaics before. I've done... Um, I've done whole floors in designs. I wish I had pictures of those floors I did. I did a bunch of floors in Hawaii, and they were pineapples in this long hallway. And um, that just came out beautiful. I've done uh, um, showers with beautiful mosaics. Um, I've done that. I haven't done polymer clay. I've done the paper clay. Um, I do like working with my plaster. I like working with the plaster and I like doing that with all my journals. I do enjoy that a lot and putting it on my pages, on my fabric. I enjoy that, I must say. I think there's still stuff I want to do with um, with metals. I tried um, just once, and I like the way it came out. I need to try it some more. Is the stamping on metal? Um, well, really, you're doing it on the solder. You know, you lay out, get some solder out there, and you stamp it. It looks really cool. Oh yeah, I love a cyanotype. Also, I love doing that. But that's more, uh, you know, spring, summer thing because you got to put it outside in the sun because I do it, you know, I don't have the, the lamps for it. I do it naturally out in the sun. So that's sort of a, um, you know, seasonal. Paper mache, you know, I really haven't done that. I think that would be kind of cool. Another thing I thought would be kind of cool to do, which is also very inexpensive, is paper, you know, making paper. I've never done that. I've talked to Beth about that. Uh, I think that would be fun. Well, hi, Gam. We're just sitting around complaining <laughs> about what we want to do artistically. So, Lisa, when you say paper mache, um, what would you be making with paper mache? Are you talking about figures or um, what exactly? Here you are looking at all this blank stuff. I haven't finished my little quail. I'll put my little quail there. He's been sitting around waiting for me to be inspired to finish him. <laughs> oh, Russell, how cute. I love those dogs.
Oh, yeah, big time difference, Kim, that's for sure. Now, if I remember right, your, your daughter went over to teach over there. Was that, is that why they're there? Oh, that'd be cool, Lisa. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought I remember you saying. Well, I also like working with um, the beeswax with fabric. Um, you know, making... Um, you know, standalone pieces with them, um, in particular, old um, children's clothing. I think it looks pretty cool. So I think it just comes down to I, there's too many things I like. Too many things. So anyway, so you ladies that just came in, you're wondering, wait a minute. I thought she said she was ironing. Well, we were ironing earlier. Here's some of the stuff we ironed. Now it's really dry. See, this looks like watercolor. Why? Because it's watercolor paper. <laughs> This is what I was ironing. We were almost all dry. Some of these are white oak and some of them are um, sweet gum tree. And I think they all came out pretty cool. Now this is one thing I never get tired doing. I thought I would. I've been doing this for almost two years now, and I'm never disappointed. I learn something different every time I do it. I think because, you know, it's once you get it going, it, everything's out of your hands, and whatever happens, happens. I mean, there's some manipulation that, you know, you can do, but... In general, <laughs> it's going to do what it wants to do. And boy, I got a big old yard right now in between my studio and my house that is just like, <laughs> I don't know about that deep, that deep, and leaves the whole yard in that area. So I got plenty to pick from, but it's just one type, one tree. So not too much of a variety. Anyway, those came out pretty cool. Then I got some other stuff drying right now. And then I got another batch to put a couple of batches I'm going to do tomorrow. Because I got people sending me leaves from all over the country. <laughs> Which is fun. That's right, Kathleen. No boredom there. The beeswax. Um, I'd have to figure out how to set up my camera because my pot that I do that in, well, the, for the clothing, the pot is about this high. And then I have to, you know, dunk it in and lift it up. And the way my 
camera set up right now, there is no way I could do it here. Um, I guess, if, well, no, I don't, I don't know. How, hmm, I got to think about that one, how I could do that. Because the way my husband set my camera up here is pretty stationary where it is. And I wouldn't know how to set it up to, um, yeah. I'll think about that, though. I might be able to do something miniature-ish. And the principle's the same, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to think about that. Yeah. That's you too, huh, Sue? Yep. Making paintings with collage. You know, one of my favorite things, again, and it's a big thing, and it doesn't look so as good when you do it small. Um, there's this collaging technique. Let me see what. Oh, dear. I don't know if I can get this. I, see, I do have like one of everything that I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know how I can. Let me see. How, how can I get that? Without hitting me over the head with it. Um, hold on one second. Because I do want to show you that. that. This is a fun thing. I've been wanting to do a workshop with this. But I don't have the space in my in my studio. And I'll explain why in a second. Let me see. Um, nope, I don't have that there. But I have a stool. i got to get up high. I'm going to get it. I'm determined to show you guys. Hold on. I just got to find something I can. Oh, there I, I found. I found a bucket. I can stand on the bucket. If you hear a big kaboom, you know it was all for you guys. <laughs> I'll blame you guys. One for the cause. <laughs> Some of you have my address. If you hear a big kaboom, call 911. <laughs> One artist down. Oh dear. Okay. Don't panic, anybody. Uh oh, now it's stuck. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, wait a minute. This may <laughs> and I can't stand on my chair because my chair is on rollers. I'll really be dead. Oh dear. Hold on. Plan B. Plan B. Well, maybe it can't do pan B either. Okay. Oh, the things I do. Okay, now if this falls, it's going to land there. <laughs> I know it's going to fall because this thing's heavy. So, uh oh. Very good. It landed on my chair. Okay. And, of course, it's too big to fit into one frame. But, okay, let's start here. Uh-oh. Okay. Can you see that? <clears throat> well, it's about, it's about three feet long. So, let me move it forward a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Oops, now it's hitting the other computer. What a mess. Okay. Okay. 
I love doing this kind of collage. And what this is, is I got a, a picture <clears throat> and printed it uh, in black and white. And the picture, let me see if I can highlight for you so you can see it. The picture was, this is the picture right here, right here, and across like right here that was the photograph and i um i glued it down no this was the photograph oh, oh wait i take that back i remember now i did it two different ways i got her face and i first got her face and then because i didn't know what i was going to do at the beginning and I glued her down just to a regular size piece of um, copy paper, which is like right here. But I just glued her face on there. And then I, I did her neck and shoulders and um, painted those. Painted her face, you know, I went over with, you know, with some... Um, um, I think I did it first with some pastels, put it in her hair and her face and her lips and then drew this out. And then um, continued the shape all the way down and put pieces of paper. These are papers here that I did and uh, more different papers down here and then stamped on the papers to create the rest of her dress. So this whole thing is a collage. And this is a repurposed um, door to some old cabinet that I saw on the side of the road. And um, and you, I just left all the old paint. You can see all the, the nicks and, you know, where the old paint was and everything. And, um, and this is fun to me, too. All this kind of stuff is really fun. <laughs> And then um, from some magazine, I cut out the flowers. And um, then I um, printed those out in black and white because I wanted to use the pan pastels on it. And it was just a partial picture. So then, you know, I just extended the shape out and, you know, and then drew in her arms and, you know, made the whole the whole picture now i love this kind of collage too i think this is really fun so um and that's done on you know you can do it on anything but it looks really cool when you do it on a piece of wood you know so but this isn't the kind of thing i can do live either it's, it's too big it's you know and when you do it small, it, it's not as dramatic and it's, you know, it just it just doesn't work. You need to have a large piece to do this with or else it does. To me, it doesn't look as good. In other words. Um, anyway, so that's another thing. See, I, see, I like a little bit of everything. See, that's my problem. There's just too many things that I enjoy doing. I almost have forgotten how I did this. <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, sort of like this principle now of this girl. Um, there is an artist. Um, what is her name again? I just I had it in my head and it just left me. Um, oh, I can't remember right now. It starts with an A and I can't remember. But anyway, um, what she does is she gets, like I did, um, her work is what inspired this piece I just showed you. But what you do is, like, for instance, you in a magazine of some kind, you find a, <clears throat> the head, an interesting, an interesting person, you know, and you get their head. And that's what you start off with, like I did with that one. And... But what she does her art on is on wallpaper. Hi, Donna. 
and um, um, you know, the textured wallpaper and the paintable ones, that white. And she puts the, the head, you know, on there. And then from there, from whatever, you know, jelly prints you have, uh, other things you get out of magazines, books, you know, it doesn't matter where you get. It's all paper stuff. And then she, you start, you start to create the body and the clothing or whatever, however it is you're going to design, you know, your character and you do it on that wallpaper and you glue it on and you paint and it's just really, really cool. And it's the same principle of what I did on that piece of wood. And again, that's not anything I can do live either because that's even bigger what she does because she, the wallpaper is like what that's two and a half feet wide. And then she usually the pieces are about anywhere from six to eight feet long. And then you create that whole big creature. And she has um, paper all over the floor. And then, you know, if, you're, if you don't mind your hands and knees, you're down there gluing and painting and others, you, they've got you on those big long tables. And then, then still others, um, they'll have that piece of wallpaper hanging um, from, you know, some kind of, a, you know, something that you can hang like maybe even like you know those um those hangers like for men's trousers you know the clip they'll clip it and then they'll hang the the hanger on the wall and then you're busy doing all your work all your artwork you know standing um there against the wall so it all depends what's easier for you you know working on a table working on the wall or working on the floor um, and those are really fun. I've always wanted to do a workshop with that, but, um, the way my workshop is my walls are shelves and, you know, things like that. So I don't have like walls to be able to hang. I don't have floor space because I got tables, but yeah, I don't have enough tables to conduct a class. So I'm in a little quandary there about that, but I would love to do that. Scotty, I haven't talked to you in a long time, Scotty. Yeah, Elizabeth, I do, you know, it's just that I'm feeling like I'm getting into a rut. So I'm trying to talk myself out of the rut before <laughs> before I'm really anchored down in the rut, you know. Um, ooh, you've been baking, Donna. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know, Scotty. Are you still moving? I mean, May's going to be here any day. It'll be here soon. You said you were going to move. I've been waiting to hear from you. Yeah, Donna's going to tell us what she's been baking, and we're all going to get hungry. Er. <laughs> we'll see when Scotty moves, she's going to be moving into my town because her son and daughter-in-law live where I live. So Scotty wants to move closer to her grandkids. And um, so then she'll be closer to, to come and play. Hungry, yeah, hungry is right. I'm sitting here salivating. I'm getting hungry. I'm not sure what meal I had today. I didn't eat what you would call breakfast till like about 11 o'clock. And then I ate, I guess what you would call supper, around 4.30. And now I'm hungry. <laughs> it's time for dinner. Time for dinner. Oh, wow, Scotty. 
She's been a good girl. Well, I hope you can get down here soon. Is your house up for sale? She made 120 wagon wheels. They're, they're biscuit top and bottom with, oh, oh dear me. Oh my gosh, Donna. Oh dear. <laughs> that sounds so bad yet so good at the same time. <laughs> it's like it's got everything in one that you like. Well, Scotty, when are you going to do this? I thought you wanted to be here. <laughs> are you going to wait for her? Her 10th birthday. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Oh, she's going to start in January. Okay, sounds good. Wow. Yeah, that's true, Kathleen. You had a purpose. Go for it. I told my husband he better get a purpose real quick. <laughs> he's he's got too much stuff all over the place. Ah, <laughs> ooh, shortbreads. Ah. Uh. The best shortbread cookies. Are you making cookies? I, I'm assuming you're making cookies. The best shortbread cookies that I've ever had were these macadamia nut shortbread cookies dipped in chocolate. Oh, they were so good. <laughs> One of the favorite things, see, I don't make a lot of stuff anymore because my husband being diabetic now, so I just don't make anything fun anymore. But I used to love to make mango butter and then you would dip the um, the shortbread in the mango butter. That was so good. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Now I think I need to make some mango butter, but I have to make it over here so my husband doesn't see it. But then after I make it, what am I do with it? I can't eat it all. Mm-mm-mm. Boy, that Kathleen, she's on top of everything. Sure, he found photos. <laughs> tiny by time, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Everybody's busy this time of year, though. <laughs> so I have an excuse. I'll have to eat it myself. <laughs> Mm 
Oh my goodness, Donna. You are a busy bee. Wow. Yeah, well, if Scotty ever gets down here, she she can come over and we can play art. We can do stuff together. And Vicky, Vicky, anytime I want somebody to come over, Vicky, she'll come run running down. She loves to play. And um, poor Sarah, Sarah's husband, Sarah's the uh, the other one that comes over to my studio a lot. And uh, her husband recently had a stroke. So she's been, um, you know, her time's been consumed at the hospital. Now he's in, re in rehab. And then when he gets home and so, um, um, I, it affected one side of his body. And so, like I say, he's in rehab right now. Um, when he went in the hospital, he went in, they, they were thinking it was something completely different. I don't know all the details except for what Sarah's told me, but he went in ad originally and they thought he had some kind of, uh, he had had, well, a month or so before he had pneumonia and he was in the hospital for like 10 days, came home, he was doing good. And then he got a really bad pain in his abdomen and they thought it, I forget what they thought it was gallbladder or something. And they were checking him for that and they couldn't find out what was that. And then in the middle of all that, I don't know if he, he had it before he went into the hospital or while he was in the hospital, but he ended up with a stroke. So, um, um, he should be going home pretty soon from the rehab. Oh, a dachshund. I think those are so cute. So, Scotty, when you come up here, are you going to um, um, try to buy something? Or are you going to um, rent for a while before you look? Or what, you know, do you have any plans yet what you're doing? I'm sure up where you are, everything sells pretty fast. Oh, cool. Well, whenever you come up here and you go house hunting, let me know. I'll tag along with you. I love looking at houses. <laughs> Well, ladies, I think it's run its course. I don't have too much else to say, believe it or not, <laughs> unless you guys do. <laughs> I think we lost, um, I think we lost Jennifer. She hasn't, she hasn't chimed in in a while.
Oh, Darla, I forgot to. Um, oh, her battery died. Oh, no, poor thing. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> Well, I'm going to think about all your suggestions, see what I decide to do. I probably need to do a de-stash. I mentioned that before, but I think I need to get serious about that and just get focused. I guess I just don't know where to start. It's one of those things. It just got cold. Are you wanting something to do on live or just to do? Um, either way, I'm just trying to. Either way, I'm. I'm. I started off thinking about just you know for me, but it doesn't mean that you know we can't do it together, you know. I've got that little journal that I'm doing um, with Susan. So I've got to get the next page of that going because I'm having so many issues with my videos and oh, I don't even want to get into that again. But anyway, I can't, I can't uh, record and edit and post. I got, I got some kind of software issues. So right now all I can do is do lives on one computer and the other computer won't let me do lives. Uh oh, Jennifer's back. Stop talking about her. She's here. Woohoo. <laughs> we were just talking about you, Jennifer. Where is Jennifer? <laughs> She's back. <laughs> yeah, so I've got to do that. And for me to be able to show it, I'm going to have to do it live, which is going to be even more challenging because um, I can't stop and think and, you know, I've got to like go, go, go. So that'll be interesting. And it might be kind of fun. I like to be challenged like that. <laughs> no, the only, the only reason I brought you up, Jennifer, is because you hadn't chimed in. And I go, wait a minute, where's Jennifer? Where'd she go? Then I heard about your battery problems, so. We were still just talking about the same old thing. Art, what to do? What to do next? All I know is tomorrow I have to do some more eco-dyeing. I've got probably like at least two or three batches to do tomorrow. In the meantime, I will be working on my bugs. I got to find my bug stamps, so I'll find those. And I don't know. After that, I don't know. Exactly, Jennifer. What to do, do what to do. I have no idea. So I will look into, um, as far as showing you guys how to do stuff, I'll look into about working with the beeswax. I'll see as far as the camera angle, what I can actually show you how to do. Um, I mean, working with beeswax is fun even when you're just doing it on paper. It turns it very translucent. You guys have probably 
done that before. That's really a cool look for, um, you know, different things that you're doing and putting into your journals and things like that. That alone is pretty cool. Yeah, Elizabeth, I've done that. That is a lot of fun. I, I do enjoy doing that, too, on the vases. I've done those. I've actually got one in my um, in my home, in my living room, that I put together. That was kind of fun. I should try that again. There's a lot of things I've done, but I haven't done in a while. So maybe that's what I need to do. I need to, like, you know, rehash everything. Maybe I don't need anything new. I just need to do some of the old stuff over again. Recycle. There you go. Recycle. <laughs> uh, I got this. I don't even know what it was made of. It wasn't wood. I guess it was some kind of a plastic or something, or maybe a resin. But it was a, um, it was like, uh, I guess, halfway between a bowl and a plate. But it was gigantic. It was probably like three feet in diameter. And it just slightly went up a little bit. So what I did is I did the whole thing um, with mosaic. And then put it on a pedestal out in the yard and turned it into a bird bath. It was so cool. <laughs> Everybody loved that thing. Yeah, exactly, Scotty. Yeah. Oh, gosh, Jennifer. All I got to do is walk around in my place. It's one big mess. <laughs> At least all my big mess is in each room, you know. I've got... My mixed media in in one room. My mixed media stuff and my tables all in one room. My computer, my printer, that's in one room. And then I've got all of my eco dyeing and dyes and everything that has to do with those kinds of papers and stuff is in um, the other room, the kitchen area, because that's where the stove is. And I can put all my my um, natural dyes that I boil stuff with. I put in the refrigerator, give it a longer life. So that's all back there. Then in the other room, it's got all my fabrics and anything that has to do with fabric. And then the last room, it has the stuff I made that I is in my Etsy shop and um, my books, 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 and books. So, um, that's just the way it is. Okay, ladies, do you have any, if you don't have any more questions, No questions? <laughs> no question? Yes, Jennifer. Oh, yeah, sale tomorrow. Sale tomorrow. What time, Darla?
Oh, two. Okay. Excellent. All right, ladies. Thank you for keeping me company. And I got a lot of things to think about. I got to use still to put all this stuff back up. <laughs> Thanks again, and I will see you guys when I see you guys, probably in somebody else's live. You know how that goes. All right. Good night, everybody.